Hello everyone and welcome to this full day of trading where I am going to take you with me and record every single trade I'm taking throughout the day. Before we begin, I want to have a quick look at my daily plan. Okay, as usual, I post that in my trading channel in on the on the days I'm not doing the stock market update. Okay, so here looking at the ES, today I was expecting a new all-time high to be marked out. The reason for this was that we flipped a very key area I was showing in the stream yesterday. Okay, we also had some more indications with a TPO poor high and we also have bullish market structure and a daily open in the upper quartile. So that is a very specific um, statistic I developed which has an over 90% probability of seeing the move above previous day high. Okay, so here I marked out my areas of interest for the long trades, my areas of interest for the short trade, and um, yeah, I did the same for the NASDAQ, very similar context, we had some impulsive moves to the upside yesterday, same as the ES, we had a poor high, daily open in the upper quartile, and a key level that has been flipped from resistance into support. Once again, I marked out my long areas of interest and my short areas of interest. So far, I was taking trades in between. Okay, so none of these levels have hit yet, but still I can obviously capitalize on the moves in between. Okay, if we fast forward, we can see down here, we're looking at the ES and we can see we already took the previous day high as expected. So now I'm going to walk you through the trades I have already taken in London session. Let's now have a look at the first trades of my day. What's important to say is that today, and that is something I typically do when markets are approaching the tops, okay? So on the ES as well as on the NASDAQ, we were approaching the all-time highs. Especially in London session, I like to stick with the quick trades, okay? Quick scalps only. And the way I do things is typically that I start out with using smaller position size. And once I have built up a nice pad of profits, I like to to increase my position size, but that's something we will see over time. Okay, so let's have a look at my first trade here. I can speed up the process a little bit and do a 2x speed. So um, here we can see on the ES, I was looking at a value area high retest and what we can see here as well is that it was a bit of a supply into demand flip. I was even interested in compounding this trade. So my idea was to place a two contract order here, expect a new daily high. Okay, so we can see that here, it's also the 50 uh, SMA on the one minute. Okay, and the context here was this. So we had a bit of supply here. We flip that zone into demand. So the market is showing me that it wants to go higher. At this time, everything was pointing towards making a new daily high. So I decided to take a long trade here on the ES. We can see I got filled on my second contract here. So now in two contracts and, um, at the same time, I'm also placing a long order on the NASDAQ. The context is very much the same. I was uh, looking for at least the previous day point of control. Again, here, I wanted to compound into this position as well. We just saw a nice bounce of the VWAP. Here we can see a bit of a supply into demand flip. I think I didn't even get got filled on the second contract here. So I was left with one contract only, but we can see that develop. So at the same time, I'm managing the position on the ES on the left screen. So the left CCTR is ES, the right one is NASDAQ. Okay, so here we can see the NASDAQ already seeing a nice push into the previous day point of control. I have to acknowledge that this is resistance, so I'm placing my stop loss at entry already protecting this position and my fingers on the trigger to close this trade manually, which we can see here. And that is something I yeah like to do in London session, especially because what we have to keep in mind is that this is my first trade of the day. So I like to lock in the first profits as early as possible. I don't want to get greedy 
greedy on my first trade and just get some trades in and compound the small profits over time until I then can then think about adding more onto my winners or even using a bigger position size. On the left, we can see I'm still in my ES trade. Uh, we unfortunately didn't see the same move above the local high as we saw on the Nasdaq, but that's not a problem. I was aiming to take one contract off after taking the local highs, which was a front run of the overnight high at the time. So it was the daily high, as we can see there. And yeah, it took some time to play out on the ES. We had a bit of a reject or a bit of a pullback at the previous day point of control on the NASDAQ. Overall, we continued this uptrend as we can see here. New high was made. That was what I was expecting, but I was totally fine with taking profits early. Okay, we can see now ES also hit my take profit one. My stop loss is now moved to entry. And what I'm now doing is monitor price for potential signs of weakness because once again it is my first trades of the day and I want to lock them profit so when I see a sign of weakness or when I see a pullback I'm just closing this trade manually locking the remaining profits and I'm waiting for the next trade to come to fruition okay we can see that here it didn't like the follow through just closed the trade because I was good with another $150 profit okay so those were my first two trades on the ES as well as on the Nasdaq. So now we're looking at the third trade I took on that day and here we can see it was a retest of the previous day point of control so fast forward we have flipped the previous day point of control into support in that regards look at the um top right uh, template okay because i'm using the previous day levels on the four tick chart okay the cctr down on the uh, bottom right is on the tick one okay on tick four we had the previous day point of control you can see a nice bounce here i was utilizing one minute auto flow which i like to do in london session especially but it can be helpful in ny session as well to be fair I saw a note which was right here as well okay so that was lining up with the previous day point of control I did take a quick long trade here with a quick take profit one I was seeing the ES pull back so I was just aiming for a few ticks and that was adding another I think it was 100 120 dollars to my um, yeah, P&L for the day. So uh, once again, I was just aiming for a quick take profit. If I didn't see the bounce I was expecting, I would have just closed the trade manually. Okay, so that is something I uh, do, as I said previously, in London session, I'm just trying to compound those small profits, which over time add up to build myself a nice pad of profits to then increase my position size. So here we are now looking at some interesting price action because the ES, which we can see on the bottom right as well as on the bottom left, is approaching the previous day high as well as or, or the previous day value area high and the previous day high were basically at the same level. Okay, what I like to do at these predefined higher probability trades is to check the five minute auto flow and see if I have a potential entry. Okay, so here we can see while approaching the previous day value area high and previous day high, which is an area of interest for the short trade, I actually see an increase in positive delta, which we can see down there on the order flow. Okay, so we can see some longs opening into the level. And what we have to keep in mind, they might get trapped if we close the five minute candle below. But if we don't, this is actually indicating a sign of strength. So for me, it is very crucial to now wait for the five minute close. Another thing I have to monitor at the same time is that the Nasdaq is running or slightly front running the previous day high at the time. Whenever I'm checking both for correlations, I like to either hit both um, the level of resistance or one of them being a little bit further away. But seeing Nasdaq so close to the previous day high is actually a red flag to, to me. Nevertheless, I'm still waiting for the five minute close, see if um, 
If the bears want to push price below the previous day high to close that five minute candle below and trap some traders above. But if that is not, not the case, my trading idea for now is invalidated and I would expect continuation of this uptrend. We can see that here. We did close the five minute candle above. That for me is a sign of strength and I am not taking a short trade. As a trader, it's not always about taking every trade you pre-plan, but also read the order flow while one of your levels gets hit and then make an informed decision. In this case, order flow was protecting me from taking this short trade, which in my opinion would have been a gamble. So if I place a short trade up here, this is clearly going against strength and that is nothing I would like or nothing I like to do. And I have to remain patient. Okay, so this was one of the examples of when I do not take a trade. Okay, so at the same time, I was monitoring the NASDAQ. We can see that on the bottom right on the CCTR. And I was looking at this supply and demand flip because my idea here was that it's actually very unlikely to front run the previous day high and the previous day value area high. While the ES is still not really showing a sign of weakness, we can see on the top left chart on the one minute order flow, we can see the ES is holding above the previous day high. So this supply into demand flip was a potential area where I was monitoring price action for a potential long trade to aim for the previous day high. But here, once again, what I'm doing is since that is a very quick scalp trade, I like to look at the one minute order flow on the NASDAQ, that's the top right. And that is again, protecting me from taking this long trade because I was not seeing the desired sign of strength here. We can see this one minute closed above the weekly open. That was okay, but I was monitoring the new one minute candle and seeing no follow through, no longs coming in and rather I was seeing some shorts opening at this level. So I decided to give it a bit more time, wait at least for another one minute close and see how the ES is reacting to the previous day high retest. But as it stands, that is not a long trade for me. And here we can see we get some more shorts opening on the NASDAQ and in the next one minute candle I was again not seeing a good long entry here. I decided to remain patient and we can see price is breaking through the level. So for me this is not a long trade. I'm re remaining patient here and yeah uh, it is what it is. Sometimes we don't get the trades we are looking for, but it's always best to be protected rather than taking random trades. That is why I place so much emphasis on the order flow, because you can see that is now two potential losses, which I was able to avoid just by reading order flow. So let's fast forward a little bit and see what's going on here. So at the same time, what I'm pre-planning here is we can see we now had a five minute candle close on the ES below the previous day high. We can see that here. I was measuring in terms of ticks. If I see a retest on the previous day high, what is my stop loss? What is my take profit one? Because what I'm thinking here is, okay, my invalidation would be this local high. My take profit one, since we are in an uptrend, we would have a potential supply into demand flip on the VWAP. The VWAP has to be a take profit one. So is it worth taking a short trade on the previous day high retest or is that actually not the best risk to reward? In that case, I didn't even get the previous day high retest, so I decided to stay out of this trade for now. At the same time, I'm monitoring the NASDAQ once again into the previous day point of control. We can see up here that's lining up with the single print. It's also lining up with the buy imbalance. Okay, on the one minute order flow, we can see that as well. And that is something I do really like. Overall, we are still in this uptrend. It was a supply into demand flip as well. So I am now on the long watch. Okay, we can see I have taken a long trade down here. The ES has the potential of retesting the previous day high. And maybe I can expect the ES to retest the previous day high. Okay, so all of this context, Adding together, for me, that was worth taking this trade. We can see that on the one minute here. What I had to acknowledge was that up here is the one minute SMA on the NASDAQ. Okay, so this has to be a take profit one. Once again, just aiming for the quick trade here. We can see it as a supply into demand flip with this previous high here. 
Okay, we can see price is moving in my favorite direction. At the same time, ES is approaching the previous day value area high and previous day high retest. So this is an area where I have to acknowledge when the ES rejects the previous day value area high and we see a clean retest here, this is a sign of, or this is a red flag for my long trade and I have to close this manually on the NASDAQ. So far looking on one minute auto flow, that is okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, my fingers always on the trigger to close this trade manually because that is about 100 bucks and that is not too bad for London session. I'm just adding 100, 150, 200 and um, yeah, I'm totally fine with this. Here we can see 130 or something like that. Close the trade manually because what I acknowledged was that we have a potential one minute demand into supply flip here. I was not too convinced that we see major follow through here on this trade. I was reading the tape at the same time. I saw some weakness on the ES, so I decided to close this trade. Okay, so yeah, now I am looking at the ES next. So let's have a look at the next trade I took. So here we are looking at the next trade I was anticipating and we can see here the ES is retesting the previous day value area high and previous day high. Okay, so still price is showing strength, which is indicated by bullish market structure. We do have a bit of a supply into demand flip here, but still I was looking for a short trade since it is a predefined level and it is resistance. I was seeing upon waiting for the new five minute candle open that we do get some shorts opening in the new five minute candle. That for me was a short trade entry, but I was not interested in leaving my stop loss up here because I was not expecting, not expecting massive follow through in this trade. Reason being, is what I just explained here. We had a supply into demand flip here, trend is up, another supply into demand flip for potential continuation to the upside. At this time, I do not know. As a trader, it's not my job to know if we go up or go down. I simply have to read what is read what's in front of me, read the new data, read the auto flow and make an informed decision. At this time, I was leaning more towards higher prices to come. So that is why I wanted to protect it. And I was only aiming for a quick trade here. At the same time, I was, while I was in this trade, I was monitoring, okay, the NASDAQ has the potential of a low time frame supply into demand flip here, which would indicate trend continuation. That is a sign of weakness for the ES trade. So at this time, I was very much expecting to get stopped out of this trade. We can see this here. That is the one minute um, chart on the NASDAQ. We can see this um, box I showed previously why I closed the trade manually that was now flipped to support okay after seeing a nice rejection but here I was fully expecting to get stopped out of this trade but still I was not interested in placing my stop loss above this local high reason being is when I expect um, further price increases why would I increase my risk here and re re increase my potential loss. Okay, so I was totally fine with choking the trade here, getting stopped out. And yeah, we can see on the NASDAQ that once again, it looks like it wants to go higher, but in the end, we saw a bit of a pullback here. So price was definitely a bit undecisive here. We had seen, if we look at the one minute auto flow, that is okay. So the rejection was good actually, but um, yeah, now we are just flirting around this level. So what's going through my mind now is that I am even interested in closing this trade, be it for a slight loss or potentially even if price goes in my favor direction a few ticks, I'm just gonna close this trade manually because at this time I was thinking, hmm, the daily value area high, looking at these orders here is probably going to be a support level once again. So I'm interested in just getting out of the trade. It's at the time being, it wasn't really playing out as I was expecting or as I would have liked it to play out. And yeah, I was just calling this a trade, closing at 50 bucks profit for London session. Yeah, I don't want to 
in, as I explained, didn't want to increase my risk with a wider invalidation to give myself a bit of room. I just wanted to close this trade and look for the next best trade because I didn't like this one. So let's now have a look at the next trade after I came back from my break. So we can see we had a pullback on the ES, a pullback on the NASDAQ. And at this time I was looking at the NASDAQ, we can see a rejection on the VWAP. We did see a move below the value area low, okay, potential retest of the daily open while the ES has a potential of flipping the previous day point of control into resistance. So here I was looking at a trade, just going with momentum, going with weakness. Okay, at the same time, this was a one minute demand into supply flip, which I was looking for. We can actually fast forward a little bit here so we can see I did take a short trade on the NASDAQ with the tight invalidation here we can see this zone that acted as demand here a bit of a failed auction below retested in it to demand and then we saw the impulsive move below for a potential flip into supply okay so um, here we can see i'm in this trade and yeah here i can just skip through this because i once again didn't really like this trade and how it played out because we were hovering at the level at the same time i was reading the dom and I saw some absorption here. So this was a red flag for the trade. And yeah, this is one of the trades when I go with momentum, I actually expect some quick follow through of this price action. So I didn't like that price spent so much time at this level. Okay, this for me was a red flag. We can see on the ES also not the best follow through coming in. And once again, in London session, I am more inclined in taking um, early profits, just closing the trades when I see they don't really play out as I was expecting. Okay, so here we can see it was hovering around my entry and I was thinking it's getting more and more likely to get stopped out of this trade because I yeah, really did not like the absorption here. So let me just show you. I was closing the trade here, didn't like it onto the next one, okay? In London session, that is totally fine. You shouldn't do that too often. Reason being is a bad risk to reward, obviously. I was acknowledging that. And here I'm typing it out. I didn't like the absorption, absorption here. We can see that by all of these wicks here. Okay, so they were trying to hold this level. For me, that was enough reason. But at the same time, you have to acknowledge, don't do that too often. It can screw up your risk to reward. But at the same time, given my profit pad, that was totally fine with me. And I was then looking for a better opportunity. This is another trade I took, yeah, not too long ago from the previous one. We can see it actually did end up in a nice rejection here, making a new low. And I was then thinking, yeah, the only thing I can do here is go with the trend. Well, this was now a time where price was really slow. Okay, this is typically the case for me around my time around one for well, yeah actually from 1 p.m at least to 2 p.m 2 30 it is very it is very slow market conditions i was still still going with the weakness here that's all i could do here we can see the poc shifted to the downside bit of a demand into supply flip here that was the short trade i had to acknowledge it is a short trade into the value area low so something to be aware of i yeah just wanted to lock some more profits here uh, close this trade manually as well because um, I was seeing this five minute stack buy imbalance on the yes this is a major red flag for me and yeah I didn't want to stay in this trade and now yeah I decided to no longer look for these uh, trades here in London session since price was really slowing down reason being was also that we had a data release at 230 okay so yeah, price is in anticipation of a high impact data release. Price typically slows down. There are not the best opportunities. You can take some quick scalp trades here and there. But for me, it was no longer worth it to take any trades before the data release. 
So here we're looking now at the price action right after the data release. We can see a large move to the into the, uh, to the downside into the previous day value area low on the ES. At the same time, Nasdaq was um, hitting the TPO value area low. We can see I did take a long trade here with this strength. Okay, we can see the five minute close above the previous day point of control. I was just going with strength on the um, on the Nasdaq. Unfortunately, I didn't show the one minute auto flow, but I was using this as my um, as my trading panel. So I can't unfortunately show my account numbers. So I had to hide this and show the five minute price action, which is also totally fine. Okay, I was expecting continuation to the upside. We can see $500 profit on this one contract interested in closing this trade manually just locking in the profits at the same time the es was retesting the previous day value area I, this for me i was thinking to myself yeah this is a sign of or this might be a potential retest area on the es so i should close the nasdaq trade and look for a short trade on the es so trading news events is very advanced okay so you have to be very quick you have to um take profits quick and be yeah just be very focused on price action we can see rejection seeing some shorts come in on the es on the previous day value area high retest this is my take profit one this is my take profit two stop loss at entry leaving one contract running for a little bit more inclined in taking this last contract off manually as well because overall we saw the five minute close above the VWAP, a very impulsive move to the upside on both assets. So, um, yeah, once again, I was fine with just a locking in these profits as well. So, yeah, that was uh, really nice so far. Quick, quick trades here. Sometimes I really enjoy trading these data releases, and yeah, on that day, it was one of them. Okay, so here we can see 200, about 200 profits left on this one contract. We might see a VWAP retest for continuation to the upside. So I just closed this trade manually. We do have some buy blocks there on the ES as well. So trading the previous day value area low was definitely too quick for me. I unfortunately didn't take this trade, although it is a, although it was a predefined level from me personally. At the same time, both assets... Um, on the top right, Nasdaq also had the potential of flipping the VWAP into support. So I decided to take two contracts, long trade with a tight invalidation below the VWAP, aiming for a quick take profit one, potentially leaving one contract running, just going with momentum and the volatility here. Okay, so um, that, in my opinion, was really nice. We can see take profit one was hit quickly. And overall, the market was showing you it wants to go higher, okay, with two, so both on the ES and NASDAQ, five minute closes above the VWAP, impulsive moves to the upside, VWAP retest, so this is a potential long trade entry. Once again, I'm totally fine with $200 profit on my remaining contract on the NASDAQ, so I'm just going to close manually when I see a sign of weakness. Here was the ES, yeah, I wasn't too sure does it want to reject the previous day value area high or continue to the upside now? So I decided to close out. And yeah, that for me was a successful session of trading a data release. So I hope you understood what I was doing here. I hope it, yeah, wasn't too difficult to follow through why I took these trades. Basically, I was just trying to go with momentum, trying to go with strength, but at the same time flipping or yeah, at the same time reading context, we had the potential for another retest of previous day value area high on the ES. So that was a short opportunity while still expecting higher. So yeah, as I said, on these data releases, you have to be very quick. So actually my plan was to wait for NY Open, but I was still seeing some opportunities here on the NASDAQ. So I decided to still yeah, take, take the trades that are presented to me. Here we are looking at one of the trades I took on the Nasdaq once again. What I was seeing here was another. So actually, we were still strong. Okay, so I was still expecting higher. That's why I, why I took a long trade, although we are close to the tops. Okay, but what I liked here was the move into the previous day value area high again. We can see those shorts were absorbed. We can see the quick buyback or actually limit longs were absorbing the short traders here into this previous buy block. So I was expecting to see another yeah daily high to be made. Also looking at these uh, this double top here. 
on the Nasdaq, what I had to acknowledge was that my entry wasn't the best. Okay, so my entry was rather late. We can see it's up here, not the best. And yeah, at the same time, the ES was pulling back. So um, still, this area is holding as support. That's why I said, yeah, for me, still the highest probability, probability to take the highs once more. Still more or less comfortable in this trade, although I saw the ES pulling back. But this was the one minute candle where I was thinking, yeah, now there's a high probability of me getting stopped out of this trade. We can see that happened here. So this was about a $200 loss. And yeah, on to the next one. Um, as always, as traders, it's normal to take losses. We can't win every single trade, so it's not affecting me emotionally, not affecting me mentally, and I'm just continue with um, yeah, trading the opportunities that are in front of me. So the next trade actually was before NY Open as well. Okay, so we can see the trade that got stopped out had some follow through to the downside. So it was good that I got stopped out. That's why we play stop losses. Okay, otherwise my loss would have been much bigger. What I saw here was a nice move into the weekly open here. I was interested in compounding this trade. It was also a very good supply into demand flip. We can see that here. Um, oh no, uh, sorry. It wasn't a supply demand flip, it was a one minute uh, SFP and we did hit the 50 SMA. Okay, that is typically a good level on the Nasdaq. I was interested in yeah, scalping this trade at least into the previous day value area high retest on the Nasdaq. Okay, even interested in compounding into this trade. If I remember correctly, I didn't even get the fill on this trade, but um, yeah, that is what I was doing here. Okay, so overall still expecting higher. We can see that. So I do like to take the first touches of the 50 SMA on the one minute and five minute, especially when we spend some uh, time above the level. Here we can see de-risking the straight, but um, take profit got hit pretty nice there. Okay, so this for me was another trade I took. And with that, I mitigated the loss I took previously. Now I waited for NY Open and then I was, yeah, trading NY Open. So let's have a look at this next. So now we are about to see NY Open. Okay, we can see ES still around the previous day value area high. And Nasdaq, yeah, very close to the previous day point of control. What I was seeing here is that the previous day point of control is lining up with the VWAP. So that is interesting to me. Um, yeah, so what, uh, what is very important for me um, in planning NY Open is this. So I started my session with some nice profits. So I think at the time I was still up around $2,400. Okay, since I took that one loss, mitigated this loss. So at the end of the day, it was still $2,400, which I uh, mentioned in my recap of the data release. Okay, so this profit now determines if I go in and trade NY open aggressively when I see an opportunity. And that also decides if I go in with one contract, two contract, three tra uh, contracts, and so on and so forth. Since I had some nice profits, I was okay with trading NY open. Okay, so if there is a good move, I'm interested in trading this one aggressively. Since I was feeling in the zone, I was good. And yeah, I was also thinking I'm doing the recording. So let's have some fun at NY Open. Although um, it was Friday and I actually previously mentioned that I'm not too interested in trading it aggressively. Okay. But what we have to keep in mind is the way I trade NY Open is sometimes I am very aggressive. That means I am taking a trade within the first minute of NY Open. Now, if you have ever traded Nasdaq or if you have ever watched Nasdaq during the first minute of NY Open, you know that it gets very volatile and that you see large wicks to the upside and to the downside. What that means to me is if I see a trading opportunity, I am or my finger is always on the button on my stream deck to close the trade manually. And this is exactly what I did here as well. What I was seeing was 
unfortunately, we hit the previous day point of control and the VWAP before NY open. Actually, I would have liked it to be hit right at the open for me to take a long trade. But nevertheless, what I was seeing here was that is a nice sell block here on the one minute auto flow on NASDAQ into the level. When I see strength, a little bit of strength on the first seconds of NY open, I'm going to take a long trade with a very quick take profit. So have a look at this down here, what I did. I think this trade lasted three to four seconds or something like that, okay? We can see NY open right above. We see the retest. I'm interested in taking a long trade here. We see two contracts and now we see the bounce. $340 profit within a few seconds. I think that was within five seconds or something. Closing this trade manually because I know how the Nasdaq moves right at the open. So for me, it was just about getting a quick trade in and that's it. Now waiting for the next opportunity. And I would definitely not take this trade as my first trade of the day. The reason I was able to be so aggressive on this trade was obviously that I made some nice profits in the London session. If I had lost this trade, that would have been about that we have two to three hundred dollars uh, loss, which would have been totally acceptable for me. So let's have a look what happens down here. And that, this is exactly what I was mentioning, okay? We had the bounce, but within the first minute, we actually took the low once more. So no point in holding onto these quick trades. Um, you gotta be very quick with these take profits in NY session. And you can see how volatile this gets right at the NY open. At the same time, what I'm always doing is checking Apple and Microsoft for correlation. Okay, as you all know, I like to trade based off correlations. Since Apple and Microsoft are the largest weighted stocks in the Nasdaq and they definitely influence price. Okay, so when I see Apple and Microsoft, for example, breaking through the resistance, I am less inclined in taking a short trade on the Nasdaq because that is significantly decreasing the probabilities. Okay. So on the ES, we have the potential of a retest of the previous day high, previous day value area high so far falling short of the level. Nasdaq still flirting with the VWAP, kind of indecisive here. It tries to go higher, but it um, is currently rejecting this buy block there on the one minute auto flow. We can see that here for now, unable to break above that. At the same time, ES retesting the previous day value area high. So this is an interesting level for me. I was yeah interested in taking a short trade there. I was looking at a reaction and let's have a look at this. So far, although we see a buy block into the level, so on the left, uh, top left on the ES, it looks like um, price is held below the previous day high and previous day value area high. So I am on short watch at this moment. Um, yeah, I was still waiting for the one minute close here. I was then thinking maybe I'm going to miss the train here because uh, we see the move below already. And it is still the first minutes of NY open. I'm more interested in yeah sticking with the quick scalp trades only. Okay, so here we see and the new one minute candle closed open below the previous day value area high and the previous day high. I was looking at this buy block up there and then we saw another move above the high. Still, it, it they are trying to push this higher, but a nice volatility here. We can see down on the bottom left, I was interested in building a position now. So I took one sh um, contract on the short side already, interested in compounding another one, placed a limit order up there because I was seeing the one minute um, candle was definitely struggling to go past the previous day high, previous day value area high. So I was interested in building this position. I didn't like at this time that we had seen this large buy block. Okay, that was building while I was already in the trade. Um, yeah, um, I would have liked this one minute 
uh, candle to close below but we can see in the next one minute candle we do open with some nice shorts opening we do have the potential of now flipping the previous day value area high into support this would now uh, would, this would then mean a high probability of me getting stopped out here because this is definitely strength and yeah let's have a look at this this is exactly what's happening here if i'm not uh, correct uh, if I'm not not mistaken on this one. Um, so let's see, Nasdaq also moving to the upside. That was then, yeah, my ES short trade getting stopped out here. This was one of the trades. If it played out, it would have been a quick rejection. I was expecting a quick flush to the downside, so it was definitely worth the risk for me. But we can see while in the trade, there were some red flags arising here, especially the spy block, the one minute close above. We see the next one minute candle retests this buy block and that is a major red flag for this trade so stopped out here and let's have a look at what's going on here nasdaq also approaching the previous day high and previous day value area high now mm. so let's have a look i don't quite remember where i took my next trade so let's speed it up a little bit because then we can see What's happening here? ES still trying to flip the previous day high before we get the sign of weakness come in. Okay. Um, Nasdaq already with a pullback into the point of control, into the VWAP. And yeah, this was a place where I was looking for another long trade here. And uh, let's see, I think I did take a long trade here. So let's wait and see if I did. So let's see. Um, they are trying to hold above this, and um, I was that was a very quick one. So you you see this here. Let me reduce the speed. And um, while I took this trade, and um, that was exactly when they pushed this down. Okay, still I was okay in this um, trade. I even compounded into this trade because at the same time. This was a nice retest of the sell block here. Overall, I was expecting higher. And at the same time, ES was retesting the point of control and I saw a strong push on Apple and Microsoft. So that was why I was interested in compounding this trade. Okay, still I was protecting this position with the stop loss at entry because I, yeah, my entry wasn't the best to be honest, given this wick. Um, yeah, while in the trade, I was acknowledging that is not the best place, uh, not the best trade. I have to protect myself here and be okay with getting stopped out at break. Even for me, it's better than risking too much. Okay, so this was uh, not the best trade, to be honest, looking at this back. But um, yeah, at least I didn't lose anything on this one. So um, we can see volatility still there, still really nice. And... I don't quite remember by next trade. So um, this was the value area low trade. Oh, yeah. So uh, once again, it was very... Um, it was actually nice to trade this. Reason being was that we had so many moves to the upside and to the downside. It was ranging overall, but um, what I liked here was the move into the value area low. And this was actually a nice demand uh, supply into demand flip as well. At the same time, once again, Apple and Microsoft showing strength. So I had to be quick on this trade. Two contracts aiming for a take profit one at the VWAP. Um, yeah, so um, this is still... Uh, within the first eight minutes of NY Open, okay? So, um, yeah, capitalizing on some opportunities here. We see ES once again attempting at the previous day high. Um, the Nasdaq is now approaching the VWAP, which is a take profit one for me. Um, we can see that here. That is the take profit one, stop loss at entry. And yeah, there was a potential for the rejection at the VWAP. I would have liked a little bit higher though. Okay, so for me, this was not a place where I was looking for a short trade. Because um, once again, the ES was looking like it wants to claim the high once more. So I stayed in this trade and I did get stopped out of the remaining contract at break even. So it was a bit of, yeah, unfortunately, because in the end... We did continue this uptrend from the value area low. I think we even saw a full value area rotation. But yeah, especially after a take profit one, trading a volatile NY open, you just have to protect yourself. Okay, in that case, um, it took my stop loss and yeah, just looking for the next opportunity here. 
Let's see if there was another one. So still, it, it wasn't too easy to um, spot where this market was trying to go. The ES was showing a nice sign of strength. We do see a close above the previous day high and previous day value area high again. Now the Nasdaq is struggling with the VWAP. So while the ES was clearly trading above the VWAP, the Nasdaq was still trading below. Okay, and this was what I was expecting here. Unfortunately, it hit my stop loss here, but overall I was looking for this another lag to the upside. But here you can see it happens to me as well. Okay, so I'm in a nice trade on the right side of the market, but I'm getting stopped out after take profit one. This is something you can't, yeah, you can't, um, I can't ignore that is happening to all of us and still we have to look for the next best opportunities and yeah capitalize on them you can't get emotional about yeah I could have should have would have made a thousand bucks on this trade if I stayed in this no this trade is done and I'm looking for the next one okay so yeah it is what it is so I think there was no more trades here right at the open. So um, especially an NY open when you trade an NY open like this, where I did have, um, yeah, I did take, was it one or two losses? I don't quite remember. Um, it is very, it might get draining when you try to capitalize on all of these moves. Okay, so sometimes when I take that many trades within the first 15 minutes, I'm just going to slow down a little bit, take another break, monitor price action and wait for another high probability trade because that was once again quick scalping in between and we didn't see one of my predefined levels being hit. Okay, so that was my NY open. So this was now my last trade of the day. I did take a bit of a break and I was just monitoring price action here. Okay, so this is now 4 p.m. I was, um, yeah, already up, um, yeah, nice, nicely on the day. So I did take an early, or um, I was ending the day early, okay. What I was looking for here on the NASDAQ was this move into the all-time high. Okay, so we can see NASDAQ, as expected, made a new all-time high. That was This was lining up with the overnight high as well. Okay, so what I was thinking to myself, I do have 1 minute and 30 seconds left in this 5-minute candle. So if I see a 5-minute close below the all-time high, below the overnight high, I am interested in... Uh, taking a short trade at the same time, I had to acknowledge that the ES is looking very strong. Okay, we see some nice buy blocks, so still buying interest in the new all-time high. This um, next five-minute candle is also a new 30-minute TPO session. Okay, so we can see this is 4 p.m. Uh, to me for me, so that is B session about to start. Okay, this is now very likely to uh, very unlikely to close below the all-time high, and would that be below the overnight high? Because we're still seeing um, demand on the ES. And yeah, that is then once again invalidating my short opportunity here. So I refrain from taking a short trade here. Reason being is the five minute close above. I'm seeing strength on ES and I do not want to counter trade this strong trend. At the same time, was I was was what I was thinking to myself was that I have seen this many, many times. I'm seeing massive strength on the ES. Nasdaq was showing a massive strength with the close above the all-time high. We still see buying interest coming. You can see that on the tape. You can see that on the DOM. You can also see that by looking at the delta, session delta, volume. There is interest above the all-time high. At the same time, I'm re reading correlations with Apple and Microsoft. Apple at the same time was breaking the previous day high. The and Microsoft was also breaking resistance. And here we can see, okay, there is a lot of buying interest above the all-time high still. So what I was thinking to myself, I'm definitely not going to take a short trade here because there is clearly um, strength. What I can do, however, is go to the one minute auto flow, check the CCTR and see if I can take a momentum-based um, momentum trade. 
What a momentum-based trade aims for is trend continuation and just hopping on the train. What you have to make sure, however, is to use a tight invalidation, because obviously this is all-time high territory, you can't use a wide invalidation. What I liked here, the first CCTR print that was testing the all-time high, um, did get a nice retest here. Okay, so this was already a supply and demand flip on the low time frames. At the same time, I was checking the one minute auto flow, seeing, all right, we do still get some strong buying interest here. I was just longing this strength, longing the momentum. And yeah, I was also checking the note here. We can see there is a value being built above the all time high. We see strong buying interest. Apple, Microsoft with um, strength, ES with strength. So I can go with strength on the Nasdaq as well. Although this is more or less a breakout type of trade since this is a break above the all time high. Okay, so um, yeah, this was an interesting trade in my opinion, because I don't like to take these trades too often. But when I see an opportunity like this of just going with momentum, I'm still uh, taking the trade. Although I am more of like the reversal type of trader, but sometimes there is some great opportunities on these trades as well. Okay, so... Let's have a look at this. Um, still really not concerned, although on the CCTR we see a bit of a pullback here, but just look at the buy blocks. They are still printing higher and higher. So the um, market is showing you that it definitely wants to go higher. About to hit my take profit one. And what I'm thinking to myself here is definitely reduce risk with a stop loss at entry. We can see nice follow through. My finger is on the trigger to close this trade manually. And yeah, just lock the remaining profits because $400 profit on one contract is not too bad. I'm not aiming to hold this trade forever because we can see, look at this, on the ES1000 sell block up here. Okay, this is, yeah. This might get a pullback here. Reason being is I'm interested in, um, in just closing this trade manually when I see a pullback on either the ES or the Nasdaq and lock the remaining profits. For me, that was, um, yeah, what I was thinking to myself was it was a good day. Um, I did take some nice trades. It was also not like a massive day. It was, an, yeah, I would say more of an average day. But um, yeah, very interested in just calling it a day after this trade. Reason being was I capitalized on many trades. I did take quite a few trades. It was Friday, de-risk actually. And yeah, I was very satisfied with my results. And um, yeah, I was just waiting for this uh, trade to be closed and then to call it a day. So let's see here, a bit of uh, bit of weakness coming in on the Nasdaq and that is where I closed this trade. Reason was this buy block up here and then in the new one minute candle, we saw a move to the downside. Okay, so this was all of the trades I took. For me, that was a yeah end of my trading session at around 4.30 p.m. So um, that is not too bad. And let's have a look at how my day ended. So I hope you all enjoyed this walkthrough of the trades I took today. So that for me was a full day of trading. I'm actually going to call it a, yeah, an early day. So for me, it's 4.30 p.m. But um, yeah, I've taken enough trades for today. As I said, it's Friday. I wanted to de-risk a little bit. I ended up taking a couple of trades in NY session. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, what's good to see is that as per my daily plan, we did see the bounce down here. We did take the highs on the ES as well as on the NASDAQ. That is how a full day of trading looks like for me personally. Um, I would say in terms of that is something I forgot to, man uh, forgot to mention in the beginning. Okay, so um, today was one of the days since we were at the top. 
I wasn't too inclined in looking for of looking for day trades. Okay, I was more interested in taking the quick scalp trades because we had such such a high potential of taking the high once more. But at the same time, we did see a re rejection at the previous day high already on the ES, for example. So for me, it was a time to be a bit more protective, protect my capital, only aim for the quick scalp trades. Also, as I said in my daily plan. Okay, so if you read my daily plan. I said that I'm gonna stick with the quick scalp trades. Um, yeah, and that's what I did here. I hope you all enjoyed and see you next time. Goodbye.